Tyler Goodrum here. I'm a featured artist with Chameleon Pen and today I'm going to walk you through on how to draw with the Chameleon Pens. Today I'm going to be using a total of seven colours, which are these seven. The Spring Meadow, Fawn, Bark, Crimson Red, Summer Fun, Grass Green and Bubblegum, which I believe is a pink. I'm going to be using them alongside a colourless blender, which you'll see is used at the very end of the drone. But you don't need it. It's just something I like to use, just so it makes the drawing look a bit more crisp at the very end. So let's get into it. I'm going to be starting off with Spring Meadow YG3 Green. And I'm going to be blocking in the main colour of the chameleon. I'm going to get the lid off. I'm going to be fusing the pen for about, oh, and before anybody gets confused. I've got a cool grey well, mixing chamber on the pen because I broke the spring metal mixing chamber. So that was about 10-15 seconds in the mixing chamber and I'm going to take my scrap bit of paper, try it on, yep that looks fine. And start in the top corner, working my way down towards the eyes, slowly left to right, just blocking in that colour. Once you get to that stage, you want to put your pen back in the mixing chamber for about five seconds. Test it on your scrap bit of paper. See, that's too dark. Put it back in for another five seconds. It's much better. Start at the very top. Your way down. Doesn't matter if you get little gaps because you can fill them in with the little bullet nib at the very end. And then once you got to that stage, back into the mixing chamber for about 10 seconds. Test on your scrap bit of paper. Yep. You want to work your way around the lip. down what I believe is the chameleon's chin. There you go. And then let the pen sit for a little while. So it's dark. And then if you've got any gaps, block them in. But then the other side of his lip, you can fill in just like that. Then you want to put the pen back into the mixing chamber for about 10 seconds. Once you've done that, test on your scrap bit of paper again, straight onto the pen, to the paper, down his eye, and that motion is a little bit different than on the head, because you want to try and get the curvature of the eye as you come down. Back into the mixing chamber for another 10 seconds. Test on your paper, so it wants to be light. You want to go, let's see, I've left that in a little too long. And then this effect will be like, so the light is behind the chameleon, but on the top, so this side of his body won't be highlighted, but the top and kind of like the back end of his body will be, but you won't see that in the drone. So then you want to carry on with the same pen. You want to leave the pen in the mixing chamber for about five seconds. That'll do. And you want to start on the tops of his arms. leaving a tiny little bit 
at a highlight on the tip of his finger. Back into the mixing chamber for another five seconds. Test on your scrap bit of paper. Back into the mixing chamber for about another ten seconds. This one is going to be a light shade. as you can get it. Doesn't really matter if you go over the lines into the rucksack strap because you're gonna be blocking that in with a darker colour than this green anyway. And if you can just copy exactly what I've done there. You want to put your pen back into the mixing chamber. Five seconds. Test it. You've always got to remember to test the pen before you use it so you know you've got the right shade. So yeah, I've let that go a little too dark there. Let's see if I can get away with it. For ten seconds now in the mixing chamber. Again, you want to go with the curvature of his hamstring. Back into the mixing chamber. That was seven seconds that time. That was an odd number. And that was just like a circular motion and that was to bring the colour around to the bottom of the foot and go back over it. Just dull the pen out a bit to the darker shade. Go around the, the tip of his foot there. Right now you want to swap out of the bullet nib, put the lid back on the pen, do not put the tip back in the bullet mixing chamber. There we go. Right. And there's your bullet nib. When I can find it, there it is. Come on, focus. And you want to go around the edges that you can't get into using what I would say the brush tip. I haven't put this in the mixing chamber because it can just, you can use this as dark as you want it. And we're still using metal, or oh no, spring metal, there you go. Tail using the same pen. Still not putting it in the mixing chamber. When we come to this part because the chain, the chain, the tail is curved and looped up on itself. You want to bring it around to the bottom like so. So now the shadow is casted from this side of his body to underneath. Again, same here, and again down the bottom. So then you should get something that looks a little bit like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mixing chamber when I find where I've put it. There it is. Put the bullet nib into the mixing chamber. I've got a habit of breaking these mixing chambers. 
well, not breaking them, but letting the pen bleed into them, shall I say. Right, that was about five seconds in the mixing chamber. I want to run the pen down the edge of his tail, back into the mixing chamber for a while. I'm going to put this in for 10 seconds now. the mixing chamber that was about five seconds and again five seconds done. I want to put your metal, why do I keep saying that? Spring metal pen away. Now you want to get your Summer Sun YL2 pen. This one. And then you want to put that end in the mixing chamber. Your brush tip for about five seconds. And you just want to work your way over the highlighted areas, the parts you went light. With the spring metal. For this you don't need to put it back in the mixing chamber because the two colours contrast nice with each other so the dark, the, as dark as the yellow goes with the green doesn't really matter. Yeah I've let the pens bleed out of the edges around here but I've got a little trick to cover all that up at the end. Right now you want to move yourself onto the G R3 pen, grass green, and get yourself the bullet tip, that's this one again, and then you want to put this in the mixing chamber and infuse it for about five seconds. And then we want to start from roughly here and work your way down the wards where the shadow would would be on his body. I'm gonna run. Ooh, uh, just realised I missed a spot with the spring metal. Put the lid back on the bullet nib. Right. Back into the mixing chamber for about five seconds. Remember, it's always crucial to test out the pen. Always keep a spare bit of paper next to you. See, so now that is too dark. So I've got to go back into the mixing chamber. Infuse the pen for another five seconds. Still too dark. And I know why because I'm not tick. I left the lid inside the mixing chamber. Right. Try that again. That's better. There. What I've just done there has worked from roughly the middle of his hamstring and went with the curvature of it towards the edge where the black thick line will be 
just to create a darker shadow. So you want to leave the lid off, go back into the mixing chamber for another five seconds. I left that a bit too long out of the chamber, so I'll put it back in. That was for 10 seconds. Roughly in the top, off the top of my head. was six seconds in the mixing chamber. Right, now we want to leave the pen just as it is. Work your way around the edge at the bottom of his tail. So it looks like that. Light strokes. And you basically just want to add a shadow where you would see one from the light source kind of casting from the bag so there's going to be a shadow hopefully around here from his bag so back into the mixing chamber now I believe the part this part of his back eye isn't dark enough so I'm going to take my spring metal pin again not putting it in the mixing chamber and what I'm doing here is just going over what I've already done just so I'll blend the grass green and the spring metal pins together what I find is the bullet nib is normally darker and small, way more intense than the brush nib. Don't know why it is, I think it's just because you use this one more. But doing there is flicking the pen so as you flick the pen you'll leave like a lighter tip so that means that that's just a shortcut from using the mixing chamber and infusing the pen but if you're heavy-handed like me and you go out the line well could be potentially your drawn ruin but it's not the end of the world I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the colourless blender now, just while I'm already in there with the body. It's where there's any rough edges between the transitions from the yellow to the spring metal green, you can just blend them in. And the same with the grass green and the spring metal.
I particularly don't have a technique to do in this, I just colour willy nilly if you want to say. And that is the green finished. I've just noticed here that I'm starting to get a little bit of bleed from the metal green from using the colourless blender, so you want to be a little bit careful on that. But as it's going to be a dark shade of brown from the bark brown, I don't think it's going to be anything to worry about. Right, so now I'm going to move on to doing the rucksack. And for this, I'm going to be using these two pens. BR5, and you can't see that one because of the f light, but it's NU3, which is fawn, which is like a really light brown. I'm just going to put this over here. Right, again, you want to be using the brush end, this end, and you want to be infusing this pen for about 10 seconds. Test it out. This will barely visible. You want to quickly move your way around the bag or rucksack like that, leaving out the netted area. <coughs> Back into the fusion chamber for five seconds. Add in some dark areas where there's, I'd say, ripples in the bag before I put it back into the fusion chamber. And now you want to put this in for about 10 seconds, and this is going to be quick left to right strokes. But you want to try and use the pen to the contour of the bag. I'll kind of show you what I mean. This will be practically clear, yep. Yeah. And you want to work your way from the top. To the top of the netted area and stop. Right, so it looks like that, and that's you done with the brush tip. I want the bullet nib into the fusing chamber for about five seconds. Try it out, a little darker, there we go. Now you want to do this in like circular motions in the lighter areas and that's so it gives you kind of like a fabric worn effect. Now you want to switch out the pen to your BU, no sorry, BR5 bark pen. Now you want to get yourself your bullet nib, not your brush tip. Infuse the pen. In fact, actually, I'm going to try the pen as it is, so it's really dark at the moment. Infuse the pen for 10 seconds. There we go. Working my way from the top to the bottom of the rucksack. Down here, I'm just going to block in the colour where it's going to be at its darkest. Again, going in circular motions. Right back into the fusing chamber for about five seconds. What I've done there is add in a few textured details just under where the ripples in the bag are, back into the mixing chamber for about five seconds. It's kind of like you're working backwards, you're going from light to dark. I normally draw dark to light when I'm using my graphite pencils. There we go. 
It's a peculiar way to draw. Some people probably will judge us. But I suppose there's more than one way to skin a cat. There we go. That was about five seconds in the mixing chamber. Circular motions again. Just all over the bag. This doesn't need to be neat because it's going to be like. Effect. Now what I'm going to do is just underneath the ripples, blocking the colour like that, so it casts a shadow. And this part here, exactly the same, just blocking a dark patch. Now for the net, I don't know what I'm going to do for the net, I think I'm going to leave that light, so I'm going to get my fawn pen, which that seems dark enough, without using the mixing chamber and infusing the pen, I'm just going to colour the net in like so, and use the bullet tip on my bark pen. The straps, the head of the net, I'm going to go back under these to darken them up a bit underneath the ripples. And now for the strap, I'm just going to block this in as dark as I can. I apologise for my creaky desk. Or should, wait, I don't think it's my desk, I think it's the drawing board I'm currently working on. But yeah, you'll find is if you, when you're drew, doing this drawing, that the pens are really fun to use. It's like being back when you were a little kid, and you're using crayons, and you're just messing around. And you, well, it's trial and error with these to be fair. So, anyway, I'm going to move on to the stick now. In fact, using the same colours. Now I'm going to be using a fawn again. Where you're at, there you are. It's not a very good light. There you go, fawn, NU3. Using this for about 10 seconds. Now, what I'm going to be doing is trying to imitate the bark on the tree, kind of thing. So, strokes, you know kind of make it look like a tree branch there's no other way to describe it really right back on a bark pen which now this is going to be a necessary pen to use because now that we're doing a tree branch into the mixing chamber for about five seconds that's one two strokes back in for another five seconds Two. This can be as dark as I can get it. Tell you what, just save time. Use the bullet nib on that part and a tiny part in there. Now I'm actually going to finish this part off using the bullet end. So into the mixing chamber for about five seconds. Just testing 
testing the pen out there underneath. Right. But from the middle of the branch up over. I've left that in the mixing chamber for a little too long, so I'll bleed the pen out there. I'm now confusing myself. Brilliant. Right, back in the mixing chamber for five seconds. That looks better. Now, you want the pen as dark as you can possibly get it. I know scribbling on the paper like that's essentially wasting the pen. But it's just a quick way to darken the pen up, if you say. That was three seconds. I used before flicking the pen. Nah, not very happy with that part of the trunk, whole branch. So I'm just going to use my phone pen just to flick the branches out. So it goes from dark to light out over. So it looks like it's going well. All I'm doing there is adding in a little bit more branch with the detailing pen. Just as I went a little bit far. Now we're nearly done. If you've gotten up to that stage, you're doing the rucksack and the branch. Now we're going to move on to his mouth and tongue. And then, well, we're finished. So now, what we need is the bubblegum pink and the crimson red. RD4 and PK3. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the bullet end, just as the tongue's a bit narrow, to use the brush, brush tip. I'm going to use the bullet tip. Fuse that for about three seconds because you don't want a very light one, two, three, as it's already a light pen, and you want to work your way down. And again, one, two, three. Do that as a circular motion. Now you'll find that there's a little highlight on the end of the tongue. You don't want to colour that in. Again, three seconds. Doesn't really matter how dark the tongue goes because it's, well, it's a tongue and it's supposedly, naturally, it's meant to be pink. But I'll be going over it with the red shortly anyway. Now you want the red. I'm going to take the risk of using the brush tip right now inside the mouse. So I'm going to infuse the pen. Let's see how dark it is to start with. I'm going to infuse the pen for about 10 seconds. Again, just bleed the pen out. Again, ten seconds. This should have only been five seconds, roughly, because the area that I'm colouring isn't as dark. So what I'm going to do is go back over it. So that can kind of build up the same amount of colour that's on this side. It's not spot right to me. 
Now what I'm going to do is get, hmm, I think I'll use, when I find it, there it is, I keep getting confused because it's got a cool grey lid, I'm going to use the colour we used at the start which was Spring Meadow, and I'm going to infuse this for 5 seconds. No, I won't, because it's far too dark. Ten seconds, try that. Much better. And I'm going to colour it inside of his mouth with the green pen. That's just to kind of give the effect of the green body carrying on into the green ma into the sorry red mouth. As insects and reptiles have roughly the same colour mouth as they do body. Well, I think so. <laughs> right, back onto the RD4 pen, the crimson red. You want to use the bullet tip, infuse it for about five seconds in the mixing chamber. And just flick some detail in, into the tongue. Because if you look at a photo of a chameleon online, you'll see that it's got very like it's got really big veins running through its tongue, and that's essentially what I'm trying to pull off there. Now I know I didn't mention this at the beginning of the video, but I'm gonna grab my BL3 Sky Blue pen. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to. Just gonna colour in the little water droplet that's dripping off of his tongue, and then using the bullet tip because I know veins are all blue as well. I'm gonna infuse the pen for five seconds. That's very light, as you can see. I'm gonna run the pen through his tongue. Like so, now it gives the effect that it has. One lubricated tongue covered in saliva and a vein running through his, well, through the tongue as well. Uh, I'm going to finish off by dropping this with a quick signature as all my pens just fall off my desk. So. There you have it. There's the chameleon with the chameleon pen drawn. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, that's awesome. Be sure to share this with your friends. Try and get the word of chameleon pens around. And I'm Tyler Goodrum. Thanks for watching.